One of the things that I've loved about living in all these different countries, including very exotic ones, is it creates a friction in your life that forces you to become more self-aware about yourself because you're no longer really that similar to the people that are around you. And it kind of brings to the surface things that you believe. From a business point of view, for entrepreneurs listening, where do you think are the Where's the new American dream, right? We've talked about America, it's not what it was. Where should business people, Irish entrepreneurs, UK entrepreneurs, where should they now be looking as the land of opportunity? Well, there's two things. I mean, 50 years ago, Singapore was this kind of place that came up and they had a number of advantages, geographically, what have you. That, maybe to a lesser extent, South Korea was kind of a success story of that generation. I've said for years, you're gonna see much more niche success stories. Some country wants to be number one in AI. If you're not an AI, it may not be as relevant to you. This idea that there's gonna be some big overarching place out of so many places. I mean, when I was born in 1984, US was the best place to be born. West Germany was number two. How many countries would like even be on that list of like you'd wanna be born in in 1984, like 10 or 20? Like really, how many places would you wanna be born? Now it's like probably 50 or 60 or 70. So it's like, but by nature, the pie the pie is bigger, no doubt, but it's yeah. also being carved up a lot more away. So I don't think there's gonna be one great place. I also think that to me, it's about the individual. Uh, listen, if you go to Serbia, it's harder to find networking opportunities with rich people. I've never been a huge networker. I tend to keep to myself. I keep a small circle. So that worked for me. If you think that you know being in New York gives you networking opportunities, then you want to be in Singapore, Hong Kong, London, um, Dubai, whatever else. You know, I, I, I think with the bit, I mean, to me, it's diversification. Where your business lives and where you live should be different. Um, so Dublin or Kuala Lumpur is a place to live. Dublin, you probably have more high-level networking, unless you speak Chinese or something. Um, Malaysians speak English, but all the business I mean, is maybe done in a local language. But um, I, I, I would, I would car, I would look at things for what each part brings me. I can, you know, am I moving all my assets to Ireland for banking? No, the banking system is slow. It's inefficient. There's like what three banks here? <laughs> Revolut. I'm not putting millions of euros in Revolut. Like, keep your money somewhere else. Like, I think Singapore is probably the best place in the world for transactional, affordable, zippy banking. Um, I think, you know, the places where I live, I mean, Dublin, Kuala Lumpur, um, those are very good places. Um, for more adventure, I think a place like a Tbilisi, Georgia, I mean, there's, op there's been opportunity there. Um, people who have been there have done very well. I think, you know, Colombia will be more of a success story. Obviously, Latin America comes with some of the ebbs and flows of kind of the left-wing politics. I, I don't know where the number one place is going to be. So I want to be diversified in different places. I mean, I've had investments in Indonesia that have done very well, India that have done very well. I don't want to live in India. I like visiting India, but I don't want to live in India. But I think that's going to be a very big success story. I think Indonesia is going to be a big success story. Nigeria, the stock market's up 40% in the last month. I mean, I think there could be a, a more tenuous on that, but I think that could be a success story. I don't want to live in those places. And again, I kind of thought, okay, well, I'll live in Kuala Lumpur, and that's a little bit more Western friendly, and then I'll check out Cambodia. That's been very successful for me. I've got a friend who has a very successful property fund there, and they're just, they've got a great you know, growth pattern. So I, I look at it kind of the global citizen sandwich, as I call it. The top part is, where's your money? Where are your assets? That's a place where they're just good at money, good at managing assets. The bottom part is, where am I investing that's fast growth? The Cambodias, the Nigerias, the Indonesias, the Indias. Um, I guess I've had some stuff in Brazil that has done well. Again, I'm more tenuous on that. And then in the middle is, where do I live? That's kind of in the, in, the, in the beautiful middle. So in Asia, Singapore is where you put your money. I don't think if you can live anywhere, you'd pay to live in Singapore. There's a 60% tax on non-residents buying property. You buy a $10 million apartment, you pay $6 million in tax. Wow. It's gone. Um, Kuala Lumpur, I got a house here. I mean, it's one-seventh the price for the same space. Um, beautiful place, nice people, good place to live, tax-friendly if you live there full-time. But then, but then, you know, Malaysian stock market doesn't move that much. Real estate market, it's more of a lifestyle purchase. It's not going up. I'm investing in Cambodia. I think Bangladesh and Nepal are new places. So I don't know if there's some new dream where you go one place and it's just like all my problems are solved. And I think that when my parents talked about leaving the US in the mid 90s, the idea was let's go to New Zealand and just move everything there and start over. They were successful, but they're like, 
my dad thought the country was going the wrong direction. He ultimately didn't move. But that isn't how you should do it today. Like, pick what's best about each place. Um, doesn't mean you can't have feelings towards some of the places, but, like, if you're investing, you should invest for investment's sake. Like, don't just, like, well, I like the country, so to be patriotic, I, I'm going to make no returns. Like, if you're a Malaysian, even a Singaporean, I've got a lot of investments in Singapore because it's very tax-friendly. No dividend tax, no capital gains tax. Um, so I don't really pay any, you know, tax, tax-free tax income. Um, Singaporeans are like, we're ha- we'll happily pay the 30% U.S. tax because we want more growth. We'll put on, the, on the dividend yield, we'll pay the 30%. Um, because it's, you know, they want, they want that kind of growth. Um, they're not like, well, we have to invest in Singapore law because we're patriotic. They're like, we love Singapore, but like, it's not the best deal for our money. Mm. You know? I think that's really interesting, and that's probably a superb insight for people listening, is that it might just be one place anymore. Those days no. might be over. Like the golden There's era. so many places. Yeah. And even to hear you just explain that, because it's the first time I've heard someone coherently put meat on that. Because you hear a lot of people, there's a lot of noise in the world, and you hear a lot of people say a lot of contradictory things. And like we talked about over coffee, generally people have a reason that they're promoting someplace. It's commission or whatever it is. You're the first person to be able to coherently put it in, going, maybe it isn't one all your eggs in one basket it, is it a psychology thing andrew is it like people become rooted in that you said something fascinating there where your business lives you should maybe you shouldn't live mm. um is it a psychology thing that people just bring everything together like is it a human thing to bring all your stuff physically and emotionally together into one place i'm not so convinced i think it's what people have always done and listen if, if you run a coffee shop in ireland probably in the best place to have your company is in Ireland. I mean, you're not hiring people to run your coffee shop. I and mean, maybe the social media guy or something should be somewhere offshore if you have like a full-time social media need. But I mean, uh, I, I happen to think like people should be looking at businesses that can run anywhere. Um, and, you know, I, I, I just think that uh, people are used to, you know, where I'm from the U.S., you set up an LLC and you focus on domestic, you know, t- you know, tax minimization. I read all these articles all the time. Someone sends me like seven ways to reduce your taxes. Like use your charitable deduction. Like I give to charity. It, I don't, people are like, oh, he's looking for the tax deduction. There's no tax deduction. I don't, I don't, <laughs> when, when your tax rate is low or zero, like you just have to do it because you want. I think people are just used to a certain way of doing it. It's very hard to change. Like one of the, one of the things that I've loved about living in all these different countries, including very exotic ones, is it creates a friction in your life that forces you to become more self-aware about yourself because you're no longer really that similar to the people that are around you. And it kind of brings to the surface things that you believe. And um, I I, I just, I I think for me, you know, I've, I've just kind of realized like, I'm probably different than most people in the sense, like most people just like, hey, I like this one country or that's where I'm from. Like that's how it should be done. Like I'm afraid of going somewhere else. Like don't you lose all your money if you put it in a Singaporean bank? And I think the hardest thing for me in my business is I love spending 100 hours a week like deep diving on how can the Rwandan president grant citizenship to investors or, um, you know, Belize companies are trash, but like, what are the best banks in like mid-level jurisdictions that will take them for people who have, you know, whatever, like I, I love geeking at that. And I, I sometimes wonder whether, um, there's really enough commercial interest to justify that. Like I enjoy it, but is there enough commercial interest? Like I could be out spending my hundred hours a week, you know, building a coffee bean distribution company and, and maybe that would become a bigger venture. Um, like maybe that's what stops me from being, we talked about, you know, Jeff Bezos or Elon Musk, like, I spend too much time on stuff. There's not enough commercial interest. How many people want to go and invest in Rwanda? They want to go and invest in Rwanda once it is the next Singapore, not once it's talked about as maybe one day it could be. And so they're not going to go and like invest because they can get this weird passport. Like, I don't understand. What would I do with that? Like, yes, they, they on some surface level understand that during the pandemic, the U.S. passport had as much visa-free travel as the Rwandan passport. But like, oh, that's over now. Like, it's the U.S. is still the best. I, I just think people are... Westerners in particular, and this is why I've loved the exotic places. You go outside the West, people don't trust their government, and they, and they almost minimize their country too much. I met a Nicaraguan guy who said, our passport's trash. It's actually one of the best passports. I mean, it's not one of the best passports, but it's a pretty good passport for getting around the world. There's one country he can't go to. 
without getting a visa, and it's hard to get a visa, and that's the United States. Therefore, it's trash. If you're a successful person, and particularly if you're not from the United States, I mean, if I told you you could never go to the United States again, would your life be over? Most people, it wouldn't. You could, you could be, if it came down to Ireland is doing something terrible, and you have this Nicaraguan passport, and you can't be Irish anymore, your life wouldn't be that bad if you're living in Dubai or Kuala Lumpur or going anywhere except for the United States. Um, and I think that's hard for people to understand because they've been told, like, no, but the, the Nicaraguans, they're flooding our southern border. They all want to come here. Yeah, not the rich ones. 